Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A boy's rabbi steps in right in the nick of time to help him out at this West Bloomfield Elementary School. I looked at Solomon and I saw him struggling and it was the only option. I'm happy that I'm still alive. How accepting the invitation to lunch likely saved Solomon's life. Also, feels more like fall. The local forecasters tracking 40s this weekend. And Michigan rivals for governor are duking it out tonight over an online ad that's generating all sorts of heat. Thanks for being with us for the news at 11 tonight. That ad was done by the Michigan Republican Party, and it criticizes Gretchen Whitmer for three things. But it's the criticism that she failed to act and prosecute serial pedophile Larry Nasser that has her calling for the ad to be taken down. Mara McDonald live downtown. Uh, Mara, Nasser survivors have done ads for Bill Schuette and for Brian Kelly. This one, though, is different. This one is different, Devin. This is a digital ad. It's 30 seconds, and it's about five seconds of this, which has Gretchen Whitmer demanding that this ad be taken down. Those five seconds say she failed to prosecute Larry Nasser. She says you need the digital ad from the Michigan GOP criticizes Whitmer for multiple things, but it's this portion of it that has her demanding it be taken down. She refused to prosecute Larry Nasser on sexual assault charges. Whitmer held a press conference today with some Nasser survivors and a local sheriff, as well as two of her fellow prosecutors. We're calling on them not because they're um, violating the law, but because they're violating an ethical standard that we should all be held to. It is indecent, it is denigrating, it is cruel to use this case for anyone's political leverage. Whitmer says she referred the Nasser sexual abuse case to Schutte's office because the abuse took place in multiple counties. Schutte responded with a press conference of his own and he says no. The case came to him from MSU's police chief, not Whitmer, and maintains she declined to prosecute. It's not true. These emails are, are quite clear. And the fact is, uh, this case was referred to, the, to me, to the Department of Attorney General, uh, by Jim Dunlap, the chief of the police of Michigan State University. That's the, those are the facts. Schutte was backed up by several Republican prosecutors. This isn't the first time Whitmer has been criticized for her handling of the Nasser case. Last year, the Detroit News obtained emails from MSU's police chief to Schutte, thanking him for moving quickly on Nasser and adding that the victims will now have an advocate. Back here live, MRP, the Michigan Republican Party, is standing firm. They are not taking this ad down. And Devin Kimberly, this is an attack ad using Nasser, but already in this cycle, we have seen Nasser victims do ads for politicians, namely Brian Kelly. As a matter of fact, Bill Schuette has a pro Bill Schuette ad coming out shortly on television where you've got the parents of a Nasser survivor thanking him for taking part in how he handled this case. So this is being used most definitely uh, in this political yeah. cycle. We're live downtown tonight. Back to you. And with six weeks to go, don't expect any let up in the ad parade. That's for <laughs> sure. Yeah. All right, Mara. No. Well, meanwhile, Bill Schuette is asking the public to share confidential tips about possible sexual abuse by priests in the state. The move comes after weeks of grand jury reports in Pennsylvania that says an estimated 300 Catholic priests in Pennsylvania molested more than 1,000 children there since the 1940s. Catholics in Metro Detroit say it's never too late to hold abusers accountable. I think they should bring uh, justice to those that were affected by the abuse. And I think it should be known. Um, I don't think it's, it doesn't matter how long time passes. I think everybody deserves the justice. The investigation covers allegations that could date back to the 1950s, including possible cover-ups by church officials. Other states have taken similar steps. The Archdiocese of Detroit says it welcomes the investigation. Strong winds to blame for a seaplane tipping just after landing. It happened tonight on Lake Shannon between Heartland and Fenton and Heartland Township. We're told the plane had just landed and was taxiing when a gust of wind caught one of the wings, causing it to tip over. Two people were inside that plane when it happened. They were not hurt, thankfully. All right, so let's check in with Andrew right now. He's in for Ben tonight. Andrew, those winds, uh, the, the wind gusts causing some power outages out there too. That's right. Those gusts earlier today, easily around 40 miles per hour or even greater. Winds are still 
pretty much up there. Not as quite as strong as earlier today, but still 10 to 15 miles per hour. That's still pretty respectable. Breezy conditions out there and wind gusts not as strong as earlier today, but they're still up there also around 20 to 25 miles per hour north of 8 mile between 15 and 20 miles per hour south of 8 mile and those winds blowing in cooler air, not chillier air. It's already in the 50s in Flint. We're down to 64 degrees over at City Airport, 63 over at Metro Airport. That is about a 20 degree drop from highs this afternoon that were in the low 80s and temperatures will continue to fall into the low 50s, even 40s by tomorrow morning. But are there any more showers for our weekend? We'll talk about that. The start of fall, your seven day forecast in minutes. Governor Snyder will soon meet with both sides of the work stoppage to try to strike a deal and restart construction. The lockout has shut down or partially impacted more than 150 road projects in southeast Michigan. The governor plans to meet face to face with the union and the Michigan Infrastructure and Transportation Association sometime next week. It comes as MDOT is telling contractors that they would face fines for missed deadlines. An investigation is underway tonight over the alleged sexual assault of a five year old boy on a school bus. The boy's mother says the assault happened on the ride home from Jack Harvey Elementary in Sterling Heights. A seven year old boy allegedly forced her son to perform a sex act for about 10 minutes while other children say they were trying to alert the bus driver. Sterling Heights Police and Utica Community Schools are investigating the children on the bus. Uh, they're being interviewed. The boy's mother says she's going to seek counseling. The 33 year old woman injured when a home exploded in Harper Woods is now listed in critical condition. The woman and a 66 year old man were both hurt when they were walking to the house to do an appraisal. Police say they opened the front door and that's when the explosion pushed them back into the front yard. And all of a sudden it felt like a bomb hit the building. We thought ran out immediately thinking that somebody had hit the building, maybe a truck or something, come running out, finding, you know, being able to see all this devastation out here. This, this place just blown to smithereens. It's a miracle that that guy was, was sitting, was on the ground. Right. That someone that was in the home even made it out. A neighbor was also hurt in the blast. He's expected to be okay. We've learned the home had been empty for almost a year and was about to be sold. DTE says there were no leaks reported from the neighborhood before the incident, and they're not sure what caused the explosion. Harper Woods and state police have now taken over the investigation. Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman and the woman accusing Brett Kavanaugh of sexual assault are now in a standoff over whether or not she's going to testify. Republican Chairman gave Dr. Christine Blasey Ford until 10 p.m. tonight to accept an invitation to testify on Wednesday of next week about her claims of sexual assault. Her attorneys did respond before the deadline, but they asked the committee for another day to make their decision. The chairman has not yet said whether he'll extend that deadline. You can call it divine intervention or just being at the right place at the right time. Tonight, a rabbi being credited with saving a young boy's life. Jermont Terry tells us how, how a school lunch date turned into this life-saving adventure. Well, yeah, hold on. Whether they're trying to figure out the latest dance moves. To do jubilation. Who? Jubilation. I don't know that one. Oh. <laughs> Lulu Solomon has a cool friendship with this rabbi, Josh Bennett. This one? <laughs> He's very nice. So nice, the six-year-old picked Rabbi Josh to be his special guest at school. You get to invite somebody to have lunch with you. This is one of the coolest kids I've ever met. Solomon was so excited to see Rabbi Josh at lunch, he forgot what his mom always tells him not to do. I was talking while eating. <laughs> <laughs> and before long, Rabbi Josh's friend needed him. I was eating my sandwich, and then I was talking, and I choked. I looked at Solomon, and I saw him struggling, and it was the only option. Wrapped a hand and pulled up into his gut, and uh, the piece came out into his mouth. Just happy to be able to be a part of that moment for him. And then he saved my life. Solomon expressed his appreciation through countless hugs and even special words. I love you, Rabbi Josh. There's no doubt this kid's thankful his rabbi accepted his special lunch invitation. Anytime somebody <laughs> asks you to have lunch with them, take the invitation. You never know what'll happen. I'm happy that I'm still alive. And when it comes to who will be on Solomon's guest list next year, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> no question about it. Nope. We already talked about it today. I'm his special friend all the way through high school. Who can blame him? Because Solomon knows the shirt he wore today 
truly tells his story. Today I was lucky. Rabbi Josh learned the Heimlet years ago, but he never had to use it prior to this incident here at Lone Pine Elementary. He's advising everyone to get the training because he knows firsthand that it saved his buddy Solomon. Reporting in West Bloomfield, Jermont Terry, Local 4. A great story and a great name for a great it's little Solomon. boy. And he's Solomon. a bit of a character. He is he? indeed. All right, well, tonight at uh, Wald Lake Western football game, a 10th grader honored Aretha Franklin with her name on his jersey. Tonight's game was part of Wald Lake School's Warriors for Warriors fundraiser, where players honor those affected by cancer. Well, sophomore Caden Halliburton honored Aretha Franklin, who, of course, passed away last month from pancreatic cancer. He said he never thought twice about honoring the Queen of Soul. So when I got the news of Miss Franklin's passing, uh, I was deeply saddened. One, my mother gave me the opportunity to, uh, to pay my respects uh, uh, in, uh, in such a way that I can combine my love of music and my love of sports. I jumped at, at the opportunity as soon as possible. <laughs> and the school district has raised nearly half a million dollars in seven years of holding this fundraiser, which is really impressive. So good. Uh, something uh, we know we're not supposed to do, but many do it anyway. New tonight, what millions of Americans do while sleeping, that's putting their health at risk. Also, he was there to fix the floor. What a nanny cam caught a repairman doing that led to his immediate firing. But first, a local group teaching children how to handle what could turn into a life or death situation. My goal in this whole operation is this, if I can stop one young person from getting shot. Bringing people together in a way that's uniquely Detroit. That's coming up next.